Hello everyone. It's a Nicole Steele. It's time to go live and it's time to stamp. Oh, thanks for joining me whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay. So I'm Nicole Steele. Oh, hi Sharon. You are right on time. <laughs> Good morning. So I'm Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm the owner of The Joyful Stamper. And every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I go live on my Facebook business page. So thanks for joining me. So today, um, I thought I would use the Posted For You bundle. This I've had my eye on this for a while in the catalog, but I didn't actually buy buy it I didn't get it never got around to buying it but then my my team leader had a, a challenge for her team and I won and I got to pick a bundle so I chose this one so I was so excited to play with it this week so I have two cards for you guys today one's a shaker card the other one is just very sweetly simple card very dainty and pretty so I'm gonna be using these products and then before I get started on that just a couple other things this is the last week for my cut and emboss special where if you order the stamp and cut and emboss machine in my store you can email me your choice of an embossing folder and I'll mail that folder to you in October and if you add on the magnetic cutting plate I'll throw in a pack of stamp and dimensionals for you and stamp and dimensionals I'm, I'm adding those onto it because they're my favorite dimensional to use or favorite adhesive to use with with die cuts so I think everybody should have a package of those. So um, that's the last week for this. This is going until September 30th. And then this is the sign up special too for September. So, you know, you get a deal anytime, $99 in free shipping. You get to pick out $125 of product. You get a 20 to 25% ongoing discount on your future orders um, while you remain a demonstrator. But in September, Stampin' Up's throwing in a 16 card um, kit and these two stamp sets here, Queen Anne's Lace and So Much Love and a package of rhinestones so you can sit down and you can make cards right away because they're even giving you a link that will show you the cards that you can make with these this card kit. So if you're interested in that, let me know or that's the link right there to go ahead and get more information about that. So because, I mean, yeah, the more the merrier on a team, right? So that's going on and... Uh, last week, I'm so sorry, I forgot to award the prize for sharing this Facebook Live video. So Sharon, <laughs> you won. So I I have your address. I'm pretty sure I have it by now because you're so sweet. You buy kits from me. So I will mail you this spool of mint macaron and ribbon. And next week's prize for sharing this video is these adhesive backed snowflakes. These are so pretty. They already have adhesive on them, so they're really easy to stick onto your project. And they're just in time for Christmas cards, right? So all you have to do, hit the share button. And then after you hit the share button, type shared in the comments. Hi, mom. <laughs> the reason you have to type shared in the comments after hitting that share button is because Facebook doesn't give me the names of the people that share this. I can see the number of people, but not the names. So when you type shared in the comments, um, it lets me know who had, has already hit the share button. So this is the prize for next Thursday's live. And Sharon, I'm going to be mailing you this ribbon because I really appreciate you guys sharing. Thank you so much for doing that. It helps. It helps my business, my little itty bitty business here on the internet. So thank you. So this is the posted for you bundle. It's on page 81 of the annual catalog and it caught my eye right away. And the reason it did is because this is one of those stamp sets where you could make tons of cards and it just, it covers everything. Happy birthday, just a note, sending love your way. You can use that for anything. Thank you, birthdays, thinking of you, celebrations. And I love that these images are small enough that you can easily color them if you wanted to. Or you could just stamp them on colored cardstock and they would look great. And who doesn't love a punch, right? Some people don't like die cutting. They don't want to make the investment in die cutting. But a punch is so quick and so easy. And what I like about this posted stamp punch is you don't have to use it with just the stamp set. This is a really versatile shape that could be used with a lot of other images in our product line. So it isn't 
it isn't a one note punch or a one trick punch. I also adored the card samples. These are not the cards I'm making today, but this one right here caught my eye. I just, I love that filled background with the lightly sponged Misty Moonlight ink. And I love this little collage layout right too, um, right here too, the way the, the artist laid those out. I thought that was sweet. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to make a uh, shaker card. I had this idea in my head. This is the card right here. This idea actually came to me while I was sleeping one night and I thought, what if I use this punch to create a window for the shaker, to hold the shaker elements, and then I lifted those above it so that more of this would be visible. I'm going to choose something a little bit different with this though. I'm going to stamp this cardstock panel plus this one too. This just, I like this card, but this looks a little naked to me, so we're going to see what it looks like if I fill it in. So let's get started. Have you guys ever made a shaker card? I'm going to tell you for the longest time, the longest time, they confuse me so much. <laughs> so, so much. I could not wrap my head around the logic of it. It was crazy. But I don't know. It just clicked one day. Kind of like calculus did. I struggled with calculus my senior year of college. And then I had to take it again. Or my senior year of high school. And then in college, I um, had to take it again. And it was a breeze. Like, I don't understand that, but whatever, you know? Okay, so I'm using shaded spruce ink on shaded spruce cardstock. And this is just your standard five and a half by eight and a half inch card folded in the middle at four and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp around the edges of it. I'm going to tuck some scrap paper around it because it'll just keep this pad clean. I like to stretch them as long as possible for my videos rather than go through one after another. So I'm just gonna ink it up in shaded spruce ink and I'm going to go around the edges of this card stock here, the card base. And I'm using the flower image from Posted For You. I have not had much time to stamp at all though because we are in the thick of cross country season. And I actually sit here and scratch my head and go, oh my goodness, my college daughter's season was canceled? How in the world did we go to high school, middle school, and college meets last year? Because I feel like we're busy. And you know what? We don't even have Saturday meets for invitationals. So I'm not really, oh, I need to leave that out. So I'm not really sure how we fit that all in. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece right here. And this is also shaded spruce, and it's three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. And I will have the project sheet up in the link. I mean, up in the description to this, this live when this is over and it'll have all the measurements in there. And this is where I'm going to do this different. I'm going to stamp, um, around this also. Now we're going to cut our window in here in the round in this area. So you don't have to stamp in that area. We can leave it a little blank. I might fill this in more later on in making this card because like I said, I didn't do this in my sample and so I'm just trying something different. We'll see what happens. There's really no such thing as a truly ugly card, right? Nobody knows how this is supposed to turn out except you guys. Okay. You, oh, you already have this punch. Oh, Sharon, have you done any neat little tricks with it? Okay. So I'm going to take this punch down. This is where I'm going to make the shaker window. When you have a punch, you can only slide it so far up into your cardstock before it, it stops. So that's what we're going to do in this case. We're going to take the punch, we're opening it up, and we're going to slide it as far as it will go onto the shaded spruce cardstock. Then I'm going to take the edge of this punch and I'm going to line it up with the edge of my shaded spruce cardstock. And it just gives me a place to start. So. And I'm going to punch that. And you can save these pieces for another project if you want. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it over to the left. And I'm going to line up part of my, I'm going to line up my punch with part of the already punched area so that I get a nice smooth transition into the next area, if that makes sense. And I'm going to punch it. And I'm going to do the same thing again, slide it over to the left. So you can make the shaker window as big as you want it to be. 
and I'm going to slide it over again so that this the left edge of the punch lines up with the left edge of my shaded spruce cardstock. I still have, <laughs> I still have my athletic gear on. I just got back from kickboxing at the YMCA. I forgot how much fun that is. You know, like Tybo. I absolutely love it. I'll tell you what, it's a really good class if you're feeling frustrated or angry about something. You can punch it out, right? Now, a shaker card, you need. Um, something to hold the elements of your shaker in. So I'm using window sheets. Stampin' Up! has these in the catalog. They're just past the designer series paper section and they're clear. It's clear acetate. They come in two, you get two 12 by 12 inch sheets in the package. I, for, this, uh, this is four inches by two and a half inches and we are going to put it on the back of this shaded spruce piece and I'm going to use glue dots. You haven't used it, Sharon. Well, hopefully you'll get some good ideas today and um, you can get to using this punch. I want to take out my other stamp sets and see what other images um, it will fit with because it's a good size. Whoop. My glue dot didn't stick on there. And I'm putting a glue dot in each of the four corners of this piece. I'm not wanting to, that glue dot's not wanting to stick. Goodness. I don't know why. There we go. Not, wasn't coming off. Okay. And now I'm going to put it over the back of that window. Let's get the paper fuzzies out of the way. And lay that down. Okay. So that's on the back. That way you can't see the adhesive. All right. And it's going to go over here. Now we got some trying to blow off all those little paper pieces. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do to make the shaker card, we, on our adhesives page, we have foam adhesive strips. They're a little bit thicker than our Stampin' Dimensionals, but it's the same concept. It's gonna act as a lift to this piece, and the reason we want the lift is because we wanna put some three-dimensional items into this to make it a shaker card. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to <laughs> yes, Sharon, use it. And you know what? I wanted to tell you guys too. Anytime you make something, you are welcome to send me a photo of um, what you made. And if you give me a little brief recipe for it too, like the colors you used at a stamp set, I would be thrilled to post it on my Facebook page or on my blog. I Everybody has a different style. And I love showing all the different styles and the different stamp sets because you guys have sets I don't have. I mean, it's impossible to own the whole catalog. So feel free to send me a photo with, you know, a little brief recipe, or if you did a little technique or you have a tip to share, please share it with me. So I'm going to take this foam adhesive strip and I'm going to follow the perimeter of that punched out shape, but I don't want this to be seen. So make sure you don't go into that open area. And I extend it a little bit past the edges of the punched window because I really want to make sure that I get tight sealed corners. I don't want my shaker elements coming out. Okay. And these work like Stampin' Dimensionals in that you just peel off the liner tape to expose the adhesive on top. So they have adhesive on both sides. And yes, I actually save even little pieces like that because sometimes I need just that much to fill in an area. Okay, and now we have the fourth wall right here. And it doesn't matter if your adhesive strips aren't in a perfectly straight rectangle, square, circle, whatever, because you can bend those foam adhesive strips if it's they have rounded corners. If you're having a circle-shaped shaker card, you can do that too. You can bend them. All that matters is that you get those edges sealed. Now here's something else. If you have an embossing buddy, which Stampin' Up! used to carry these, this de-staticifies, I learned that word from another demonstrator in Canada, Cindy Lynn, you can rub this around the edges, the inside edges of those foam adhesive strips, and it will help prevent 
your shaker elements from sticking to the inside of these foam adhesive strips. Oh my goodness, I hope you guys can't hear my stomach growling. <laughs> I never eat breakfast because I knew I was going to the live for kickboxing, and as soon as I got back, it was time to go live, so I'm a little bit hungry. And I'm going to peel the liner strips off of this, and the other thing I'm going to do is we need to apply adhesive to the outside edges of this cart so it doesn't sag. So I'm just going to use, take the foam adhesive strips, and I'm going to apply little bits of it on the outside edges too because it's the same height. As what's in there now if you were to use Stampin dimensionals for the outside corners here you would have to double them up meaning you would have to stack um, one on top of another so you'd have two on each corner one on top of the other and that would equal the height of these foam adhesive strips so but I find it easier just to we're just gonna use these strips on the corners So really, shaker cards, I, I think I've said this before, I kind of view shaker cards like the soup of the stamping world. I mean, a lot of times when you're making homemade soup, you're taking all those little leftover bits and pieces from your refrigerator and adding it to some water or some broth and creating something, right? And it usually tastes pretty good. Well, I view shaker cards that way too. If you have little bits and pieces of like leftover sequins or small wooden embellishments or um, gems, you can throw them into your shaker card and it'll look great. Now for this shaker card though, I don't have leftover bits and pieces, but what I do have is this package. It's sequins for everything and it's in the holiday mini catalog. It's kind of easy to overlook it I don't remember what page it's on. I don't know. It's like tucked in the corner somewhere. Uh, let me find. Page 66. So it's right here. On, ah, my card stuck to my catalog. It's on page 66 of the the catalog down here in the corner. So it's kind of kind of easy to miss. But I like the colors of it because um, you can use it for fall or for Christmas. My adhesive stuck to my catalog. We'll put it back on there. And it comes in this little package too. So it's contained. You don't have to find alternate packaging for it once you open it. I'm going to use the pumpkin colored ones and the gold colored ones. Now when I gently lay this over top of this like that, I could sort of see the area where I want my sequins to go. And so that's what I'm, that's where I'm going to put them. And then I'll um, contain them once I get them all where I want them. Now, you might find that they're a little bit staticky, so if that's the case, just take your embossing buddy again and rub it over your fingers. And that'll help keep them from sticking to you. So what I have begun doing every week is, if you put a, place a $35 order or more in my store and you use that month's host code um, and you do this by midnight of the Sunday following the live, I will send you the um, pieces to make both Facebook, uh, both projects from the Facebook live. I can't stamp the images for you, but I can send you things I embossed, die cut, embellishments, you know, that kind of thing. So go ahead and put some, you can put as many sequins as you want in there. I'm happy with that. So then what you do is lay this. We have all the adhesive um, liner removed and then I'm going to lay that right over top of those sequins and I'm going to press down firmly so I don't have any gaps for those sequins to escape. You can even put, if you have small punches, you can punch out tiny shapes and you can put those in your shaker card too. So I know there's a punch pack in the catalog with um, leaves and what is it, an acorn, I think? It's a trio punch pack, and it's in one of the fall sections. And those images would be perfectly sized for a shaker card. So there you go, isn't that cute? I know, once you get it, shaker cards really aren't that complicated to make. Now, I already went ahead of time and stamped and colored the three major images in the Posted For You um, stamp set, and I'm gonna go ahead and punch these out. But I'll tell you, the way I colored these, I used a crushed curry marker a garden green marker and a blackberry bliss marker. And I used Stampin' Write markers 
which are, are water-based, um, or dye-based, uh, uh, I can't think of the word, marker. Yeah, these aren't Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol, alcohol ink, because I just, it's such a small area, I didn't really need any shading and blending, so I just didn't need to use those. The Stampin' Right work, markers work just fine. And you can see, I used Crushed Curry and Blackberry Bliss together. I colored, I sort of flicked my marker to color the Blackberry Bliss parts in, and then I went through over with my Crushed Curry marker and filled it in. So these images are made to fit this. And I stamped it on Whisper White cardstock. And then I have a piece of Bumblebee cardstock, and we are going to stamp Happy Birthday. Wait, are we? No, we're stamping Sending Love Your Way. But you could stamp Happy Birthday. That would be fine. Find a block here. And I'm going to use my grid paper to line up this stamp. Because it's red rubber, I can't see through it as well. So I line my block up with the lines on this grid paper. And then I line my stamp up with the grid lines that I can see through the block. And I'm going to use Blackberry Bliss to stamp for this sentiment. So what kind of card do you guys send the most of is it happy birthday is it thinking of you I send a lot of thinking of you cards which is why um, I'm always looking for different quotes and and things like that instead of just always thinking of you I like experimenting with different um, quotes on my card different sentiments so I've got that in Blackberry Bliss and I am going to tear the edges and if you want to, you can trim this even closer. I'm going to just roll the paper. I want as much of these punched images to show as possible. So I want the skinniest strip possible for my sentiment. And then what I'm going to do to make the stress even more is I'm going to kind of pinch it and to wrinkle it up a little bit. But again, you don't have to do that. It's entirely up to you. Now we're going to glue our three punched images on there. I'm going to use Snail or Stampin' Seal is the replacement for this now. But I still have Snail left. I find this sticks really good to the window sheet. Okay, and I'm going to put the love one in the middle. I'm going to put this one here. And again, don't worry about perfect placement. It's a handmade card. I'm gonna use glue dots for my sentiment there. Christmas and holidays. Now, Sharon, do you make your Christmas cards year round or do you wait? Some people, they do a little bit each month. I need to be in the Christmas spirit myself, so I typically don't start until about now. Although I'm kind of into Halloween right now. And I'm just going to um, put this at kind of an angle right there. And I'm going to bunch it up a little bit. And you can curl it. And you can cut this as skinny as you want. But I just, I love beating up my paper. And now I'm going to use some of this gold cord from the Wonder of the Season ribbon combo pack in the holiday catalog this is the other ribbon that's in that pack and this is also shaded spruce too so and it has a nice little argyle design on it it's really beautiful i think this would look good wrapped around the handles of um, a decorated gift bag or a little box but i'm going to use this gold cor cord to tie a, a bow for that now what i like about this gold cord is it's a little bit um it's not as loose and soft so when you tie it you can it's easier to shape the bow it doesn't flop around and it'll it'll hold its shape and then I'm gonna stick that on with a glue dot and you're gonna have to roll the glue dot up a little bit so that it doesn't show behind the knot of this gold cord and I'm just gonna put that right there and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim the tails I like to tie my ribbon and cord and twine right off of the roll so that I don't end up wasting any of it. You make the Christmas cards all year round. Oh, you always have Christmas in your heart. Wow. 
you know what though, you're smart Trevor because when the holidays come, you can just sit back and relax knowing you got it done. And you can enjoy all the other parts of the holidays, right? You know what, I like this stamped, this panel stamped better than, than plain. I like all the detail that it adds. So yeah, so there's your shaker card. And yes, I will even find a way to mail the sequins out with the Facebook Live project kit. So you will get the sequins too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you another card using the Posted For You bundle. And this next one, it's so sweet and delicate. And it has some sparkle to it, which I hope you can see. I don't know. Are the lights catching that sparkle? I just love the colors of it and how, how dainty it looks. So we're going to use some champagne mist, some lace, um, champagne rhinestones. We're going to pull out the works for this. All right, let's keep my card nearby for a sample. So this is a gray granite card base. This is another color I don't work with all that much. And I don't know why, because it is such a great neutral. I think gray must be like the new white or something because um, it goes well it goes with so much but it still adds some color you know what I mean my daughter just painted her bedroom gray and I'm stealing the leftover paint and we're gonna paint our hallway and our bedroom gray also because it's such a pretty color all right now I have a so this was a five and a half by eight and a half inch card base gray granite Scored and folded down the middle at four and a quarter inches. Oh, nursing homes and assisted living places. Oh my gosh, I bet they love you, Sharon. I bet they love you. They're always so appreciative there, aren't they? It's so sweet. So this is a five and a quarter inch by four inch piece of Whisper White cardstock. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking, I'm going to take a piece of petal pink cardstock. I'm going to take a piece of Rococo Rose cardstock and, sorry, that one goes there, and another piece of gray granite, and I'm going to glue it to that Whisper White base. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to emboss all these pieces, but I wanted it to be one continuous embossed pattern. So I didn't want to do these three separately and then not have the pattern match up. So that's why I'm gluing it to a piece of Whisper White cardstock first. And the dimensions for this... Um, this is four by one and a half inches. This one is one by four inches. And this one is two and three quarters by four inches. I got this layout design from my um, team leader. She has a big resource library for all of us on her team. And it's open to her levels one through three. It's called Common Cuts. This particular resource was common cuts for card makers and so what that means is if you if you did join my team you would have access to all that too because I'm her level one you would be her level two and she goes all the way through level three so you would have access to her card layouts her scrapbook layout designs her common cut um, uh, worksheets and resources so I love them and she does challenges every month too for when you participate, she puts your name in a drawing for the prize. Like I said, that's how I won that bundle. So, she keeps it fun. And I hope I will keep it fun too. Oh, as my team grows. Alright, so those pieces fit exactly on that piece of Whisper White cardstock. Now I'm going to pull in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're going to emboss it with the Ornate Floral 3D embossing folder. I like the dainty flowers on there, and I think it fits with the mood of the card. Oh, okay. I'll see you, Sharon. I hope your appointment goes well. Thanks for watching. All right, now I'm running it through. Now, this is a 3D embossing folder, so my sandwich was just the base plate number one and then plate number four. I'm still in camera here okay and now we'll take this out and there you can see how it's one continuous 
design. I don't have any chopped up patterns, and that's that's what I wanted. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, and here is an idea. Save your paper pumpkin boxes, okay? And you can use them for all your splattering and you know messier techniques. So what I did with, I'm gonna do with this, is I took a Stampin' Spritzer bottle, and I filled it, I dropped maybe five or six drops of our Champagne Mist Shimmer Paint into the spritzer. Then I took 70% rubbing alcohol and I filled the bottle the rest of the way because you can unscrew it like this, okay? And now I'm gonna spray it. So the box is going to contain most of it. And I'm gonna hold the spritzer thing a little bit away from it because I, I want it, whoop. And I'm gonna drop it on there. I want a lot of shimmer on this, all right? And the rubbing alcohol is going to make it dry fast without warping the paper. So that's why I filled it with rubbing alcohol and not water. Now you can see all those splotches there. It's going to be okay. We're going to set it aside to dry for a little bit. It looks like a mess, I know. But I promise you, it won't. It won't be. And we'll bring our card base back. And what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to stamp and punch. So we have basic gray. Rococo Rose and Petal Pink. And let me clean off my stamp from the last project because we don't want any shaded spruce ink going on this one. It's not the look I'm going for. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp this flower in basic gray. Let me see where's that. How do you guys store your ink pads? I have mine in alphabetical order but I know some people keep them together by stamping up color family that they're in, but I don't know, when I go to look for, I can't remember all the colors and what families they're in, so I can't do that. It's easier for me if I have them in my holder alphabetically. Okay, we can put the basic gray away because we're not gonna use that. Rococo Rose. This Rococo Rose is one of our in colors, so it's only going to be around until, I think, next May. Next May, and it'll be gone. I'm trying to get a lot of use out of it. I'll tell you, the Rococo Rose and Petal Pink color combination is gorgeous. That's not the one I want. It's, it's gorgeous together. I absolutely love it. All right, now we're going to stamp this one right down here. And it's okay if you stamp crooked because we're punching after we stamp. So we can align that up to make it straight after that. And now we're going to stamp with petal pink ink on petal pink cardstock. Okay, sweet little birds. Oh, I love them. And what I'm going to do is take a blender pen, and I'm going to use the other end. There's two tips to each blender pen, and I'm going to go over the outline of this word love, and what the blender pen is going to do is blend that ink, and it'll allow me to fill in these letters. I just like that little touch. It's all about the details, right? All right, where's my scrap paper? Ah, I'm missing it somewhere. Okay, all you have to do is scribble your blender pen when you're switching colors. Just scribble on a scrap piece of paper until you see it comes clear. And now we're gonna go over the outline of these cute little birds. And just pull some of that color in. It's a really subtle touch, but when you do enough subtle little things on your card, it adds up to a really good effect. So that's why I do it. Ooh, I might have sprayed a little too much shimmer paint onto my embossed piece. It's taking a while to dry. And I can't use my heat gun on it to speed up the process because it's rubbing alcohol. And isn't rubbing alcohol flammable? <laughs> Start a fire in my craft studio. Okay. Put 
those pieces aside. And then I have a gray granite strip here and I'm gonna stamp happy birthday. I have to get all my cards together for the nursing home around here because they are accepting cards again, yay. And I haven't, uh, because of cross country, I haven't been able to sit down and package them up for them. All right, now for this one, I'm gonna use Smoky Slate ink. And I'm going to stamp multiple times across this strip. So it's Smoky Slate ink on gray granite cardstock. You could use gray granite ink if you want. You could use basic gray ink. I wanted a basic gray would be really dark and I didn't want anything that dark. So I'm going to stamp in the middle here to start. And then what I'm going to do is fill in to the left and the right. Now I probably will not, I'm not, I know I'm not going to keep that piece that long. I'm going to trim it down. And let me get the scissors. Um, I'm going to wait to trim it down until I lay my pieces out and I see where everything goes. Okay, this did not dry, so that's why you're still seeing the splotches. Because you can see on this one, there is none of that going on but I heavily sprayed this one. So when this dries fully, it'll be fine. We're gonna go ahead and work with it. Hopefully it will stick to my card while it's still damp. Um, and just to ensure it does, I'm going to use a stronger adhesive. I'm gonna use Fast Fuse, which the equivalent now is um, Stamp and Seal Plus. Stamp and Seal Plus. Ooh, I went to Walmart yesterday. Um, I go shopping for um, a friend who uh, can't leave the house. So I go shopping for him and I shop for myself while I'm there. And I bought a big bag of Hershey Nuggets because I am about to start my annual Halloween Nugget Cakes for my daughters. And the real test is can I get the bag to last? to make those three nugget cakes. That's the challenge. Oh, take it out of the box to finish drying. Her dots to organize it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just in the paper pumpkin box, so I don't know that it would dry faster taking it out of the, the box, but it'll, I mean, it'll be fine. It'll dry while it's sitting here. Now this vellum cardstock, I guess the lesson is don't overspray like I did. It's hard not to though because it's so pretty. So this is a vellum piece of cardstock and it's four and three quarters by two and three quarters. And I'm going to tear the top and the bottom of it. I love the way the torn edge of a piece of vellum looks. It gets a little bit whiter than the rest of the vellum. Now I'm going to glue this here, but what I want to do is put these pieces on first so that I know where to hide the adhesive. Okay. And now I'm going to flip these over and I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals on these. So right now I'm about to start developing um, and designing a creativity kit for next month. Last month's was Gilded Autumn. And I think for October, um, I'm going to do a Christmas one. I might do either the poinsettia one or the snowflake one. It depends. I have to look at the inventory report to see what is um, they have adequate stock of. Because I include brand new product in my kits. So I want to make sure that I've got all that for everybody. But I'm about to sit down and design the project for it, and I can't wait. I am so excited. I love getting kits in the mail. It's so much fun to get that box of fun, and I don't know, just the anticipation of opening it and wondering what's going to be in it, and the idea of being able to create with it, and the projects that are done for you. Um, yeah, I like that. So I'm super excited to design these. Now, this is very vanilla scalloped lace trim and I'm going to tuck this behind my sentiment here. So we're going to start laying everything out. This Now I can go ahead and lay down the vellum. I'm going to use my snail or 
Stamp and Seal is the new stuff. Putting little dabs of it behind the blocks, the postage stamp blocks, and I'm going to stick this down on my card like that. See, you can already see, it's starting to dry even more, and those spots are fading. So, yeah. So, Mom, you were right. Taking it out of the box did make it dry faster. Always listen to your mother. All right. I just told my daughter that the other night. All right, so this I'm going to tuck just kind of behind there like that. And I'm going to take my scissors and trim it down because I don't really want it that long. And then I'm going to take a little bit of snail and I'm going to run it along the back of this because I want to edge it with this lace. And we'll just put that right there like that and then trim it. Oop. This remind me of little crowns, like a little queen's crown peeking up. Okay, and then I'm going to stick this behind this with Stampin' Dimensionals 2. I'm going to put three of those on there so that they stick. I just got a bunch of photos back. Um, Caitlin's senior pictures, um, pictures from Emma, mine and Emma's trip to Alaska last summer, and I can't wait to start scrapbooking them. I'm going to make a little mini album for Caitlin's senior pictures, just like I did with Emma. All right, and then I'm going to use my finger to um, curl this, distress it. So that'll be so, you know what the best part of scrapbooking of photos from the trip is you get to relive the trip all over again. Or even if you don't scrapbook and you're just putting the photos into an album or organizing them, it's just so much fun. You remember all the good times you had and I love it. I can't wait to scrapbook it though. I'm a scrapbooker. And I can't believe that Caitlin took out senior pictures. I have one more to go and not in a hurry, but it's just kind of... Sometimes it shocks me. Caitlin's going to be 18 next week. 18. I'm going to have two legally adult children. Hi, Jeanette. I'm getting you excited for Christmas. Why? Was because was I talking about it when you jumped on? <laughs> and now we have champagne um, rhinestones. So I'm just going to put one on each of these little um, postage stamps right here. It just adds a little bit more sparkle. Remember we sprayed this with a champagne mist um, sh shimmer paint mixture. So we're going to up the sparkle factor a little bit more by putting some champagne rhinestones on there. So there you go. We've got those two cards and we have the two shaker cards and they all used this posted for you and post a stamp bundle. So when you can buy just the stamp set or just the punch, if you buy them together, the price is discounted 10%. And if remember, if you order um, $35 in my store, shop with Nicole.stampinup.net by this Sunday at midnight, and you use the September host code, which I will put in the description to this video, I will send you the pieces to make both of these projects, including the little sequence to fill in your card. The only thing I can't do is I can't stamp things for you. So you can use other images you have, or you could get the postage for you bundle. Um, it's up to you. But um, so there's that, and then my stamp and cut and emboss special, and yeah. So cards, Christmas cards, yes. I make way too many Christmas cards. I need to meet more people. I need to have more friends so I can send them to everybody, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this morning and um, for watching the replay. I appreciate it. And I will be back next Thursday with another live. I have no idea what I'm making, so we'll all be surprised. So, all right, guys, have a great Thursday. Bye.